Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals. In this video, we are going to be looking at how you can make some really quick and dirty UVs with UV Master and Seabird, which is an awesome tool. Before that though, make sure to um, subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified every time we put out a new video. Yeah, so we've talked a lot about this in the past and uh, we've uh, usually given a lot of shit uh, when <laughs> yes. people do it and people talk about it. I can just use uh, UV Master. And for a lot of things you can, um, usually in a production environment where you have if you're working with characters most of the time it's not going to be a very good solution because it'll place cuts in seemingly random ways but like it tries to find the shortest path between points and then that's where it cuts obviously there's some like clever magic under the hood where it also tries to make good cuts but you know it can never be a full replacement for um for manual uvs but i would i don't know like 80 percent of the time um, the assets that you make, you can totally get away with using, using UV Master. Yeah, I particularly use this if I uh, I don't really I don't really want to make a full production asset, mm -hmm. but I, I have a sculpt and I just quickly want some topology for it, like using zero measure, and then I want some quick UVs for it as well, just so I can do some quick tests, maybe Mari or Substance Painter, yeah. and or you know if you're doing assets like a tree or rocks or stuff like that, which really doesn't require the fanciest of fancy in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So you can find UV Master under C plugin, and here we have UV Master. We can just dock it over here, and there we go. So UV Master is really quite simple. You have only a few options here. The one we're going to be using for this, we have Symmetry, which is going to make, try to make symmetrical UVs. We can enable that. Polygroups, this is going to give you separate UV islands based on the polygroups, and use existing UV seams. We're not gonna be using this in this tutorial, but we can just quickly talk about what this is. This means that if you have UV seams from another software, let's say you've done a planar project in mm -hmm. Maya, Max, and um, you, uh, you want to unfold this, you can very quickly bring in your model into ZBrush, enable use existing UV seams, and hit unwrap. This is insanely handy if you have really heavy assets yeah. and you just can't select or you can't actually unfold in something like Maya. This is how I used to unwrap, like um, before Maya was good at uh, unwrapping UVs. Like I would usually cut everything in Maya, get it into ZBrush, unwrap it, and then bring the UVs back into into Maya. Yeah, the unwrapping solution here is absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, I, uh, I mean, it, like whatever they throw at it, that algorithm, it's probably some of the best unwrapping I've ever seen. So. And it doesn't care about poly counts. No, it, it just really doesn't. Eats through it. What we are going to be using in this video, though, is going to be control painting. This is a completely different way of thinking about UVs compared to normally, because you normally you would just go around here and select the seams around the topology. Same here, select all the seams. With this, we are going to be painting areas we want to protect and we want to paint areas where we want to attract seams. Now, this is not an exact science, and see if we just kind of do its own calculation. <laughs> but it's an overall, it's an overall system which is generally quite useful. Yeah. So if we make sure that we have uh, symmetry enabled and then we hit enable control painting, now we can just start to paint. If this doesn't work for you, you gotta make sure that you have RGB enabled and you don't have C add or C sub, because mm -hmm. then you are gonna be sculpting on your model. You only want this here for painting. So now we're just painting in the areas where we like, we wanna protect this part and we don't want any rogue seams going across the face. Yeah, That's exactly. generally the idea. So we now, we don't want any seams in this region here mm -hmm. for natural reasons, because this just makes it a lot easier to texture paint as well. Now, this model here is a model which doesn't have any subdivision levels. This is a pure OBJ straight from Maya. So we can just start working on this. If you are, or if you already have subdivision levels on your model and you're working directly in ZBrush, you're gonna have to work on clone mm -hmm. and then work on that and then copy the UVs from this model and then paste them onto the other one once this is ready. So you can, um, I've, there's a bug with this that I've spent years trying to find find out what triggers it and I finally figured it out. So you can actually, you know, paint and, and do your UVs on your, your live model or whatever you have in there Problem is, as soon as you unwrap, so if you press unwrap and then you go to um, flatten, if you undo, hit control Z after you flatten, it, it messes up and then it like freezes. So sometimes you won't actually be able to unflatten your mesh again. Oh no. <laughs> so yeah, so what happens when ZBrush shows you a flattened view of your mesh, it doesn't actually show you the UVs, it actually flattens the mesh. Um, and now you can end up in a situation where you don't actually have your head your 3D head anymore. Now you have a flattened UV version of your head. Um, so working on a clone is just the best practice no matter what. Yeah, exactly. It's really handy. But you know, if you're, uh, uh, 
if, if you are working on a really high risk model, you know, just hit work on clone and then do it. In this yeah. case, this would be like a replacement. Let's say our model is just, just comes from, from my, or yeah, comes from my, or comes from a scanner or something. There is no sculpting, once a quick UVs. Now we just hit enable control pinning. Yeah. Then we hit attract. And there is nothing fancy about what we do now. This just has a specific value. And this is just pure blue. And this just tells the software uh, where these seams should be. Like if you, for some reason, lose this menu, you could just select pure blue and pure red. And uh, this would be this would be fine. You can also raise as well, which you guessed it. This just removes <laughs> the color. This just fills it in with white. So now I think that's actually like a semi new feature, isn't it? I don't think they used to have a race, or am I misremembering? Mm, yeah, Maybe. you could you could be onto something. Well, semi new. The problem means it was there eight years ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now we have America colors, and uh, yeah, everything, everything's great. <laughs> yeah, we have almost a French flag. So now we can simply hit unwrap, and now the magic is going to happen. This is really fast. I can say it was like one second, mm -hmm. which might may not be one second because you're dealing with ZBrush. So let's just uh, hit flatten, and there you can see what happens. So now you can see we have a really nice symmetrical model or symmetrical UVs, which is this is this is going to work really well. Yeah. Now keep in mind we have decent topology, so it was able to select nice seams around this. But you know if you have a scan and you need quick UVs for this, this is going to work perfectly fine. Hit unflatten to bring it back. And now this here is straight up ready to be brought into Maya or whatever it is. A really cool feature as well is you can hit check seams just to see um, where exactly did ZBrush uh, place your seam lines. Um, this can be a good way to overview. You could like, oh, okay, actually maybe I wanted a seam line across the forehead so you could paint something there to attract some seams there, yeah, for exactly. example. So this is a really good way of doing it. Next up, we are going to be looking at a slightly more complicated example. In this case, I find that using um, just pure control painting and painting where I want to be doesn't work that well. It mm. can work fine, but this really nice feature here called um, attract from ambient inclusion. Now, if we do this as well, just enable control painting and then hit attract from ambient inclusion. Now we're going to get, you, you could totally paint this as well, but this just auto generates the attracting seams part from ambient inclusion. Now, one thing to note here is we have polygroups on this model, which you can very easily create as well. Yeah. Now, if we enable polygroups, this means that every single polygroup is going to be its own separate UV island, mm -hmm. which makes it incredibly easy for you to separate them out. You don't have to take them into Maya or Max and cut them up later on. So for, for creating really quick and dirty UVs for bipeds, I usually use... Um, the attract from inclusion and maybe have some polygroups as well. The nice thing about the polygroups is that it just helps you separate it out. Like if yeah. you didn't have polygroups on, uh, uh, UV Master would most likely try to unwrap everything here uh, in as one continuous mesh. Uh, by using polygroups, you make you make the life of UV Master a lot easier yeah. by saying the, uh, the leg is one piece, the arm is one piece, and it doesn't want to try to connect those different areas. So once you have this uh, the, this control painting, you just hit unwrap as well. And let's see what happens here. There you go. There we go. Now we have check seams and now you can see where the seams are. So, I mean, this is, this is gonna be pretty decent. I mean, you can see the hands here, they go a bit crazy because, you know, we haven't really, we really doesn't have a whole lot to work with. So it's really hard for Seabirds to automatically do this, but it's, it's pretty good. If we were to flatten this now, now we can see that we have some, some pretty cool some pretty cool looking UVs. Obviously the hands are <laughs> mega wacky, but- Yeah, and you can make it easier on ZBrush by, you know, uh, making polygroups for each finger, yeah. uh, polygroup for the hand as well, to just make, make it a little bit easier to unwrap. So I wouldn't use this for production models. There are people always going like, when we, we do our UV videos, why aren't you using? Why aren't you using UV Master? It's so mm -hmm. much faster. But the reality is that it's not faster. It might be faster to get to this stage, you know, where we have the UVs, which they look pretty decent, but now you have to clean it up. The and problem here is clean up, and sometimes yeah. it's just it's just actually more wasted time to yeah. clean it up than it is to do it properly. Because honestly, making seams when you have good topology, uh, making the cut doesn't really take that long. No. Um, so for, talking a few minutes to, yeah. to select all these. We have tutorials on that on YouTube as well for how to do it properly. But this is really, really useful if you are dealing with really high poly models. You have a concept sculpt which has been decimated. You have a scan or you just really want to do some quick tests or, you know, you don't really care. You're doing a personal <laughs> project and you just you really can't be bothered to, to actually unwrap by yeah. hand. I mean, sometimes even if you just if you just need UVs to be present, you can just go with P, uh, the packed UV tiles. 
you know, even if you if you if you really didn't care, like yeah. the only requirement was that it had UVs in it. Yeah, uh, that was about it. So yeah, if you go to create and yeah. PUV tiles or something, yeah, that would be awful. But <laughs> it totally works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's that's how you super quickly and in a very dirty way mm -hmm. get some pretty damn functional UVs compared to the time you spent on it. Yeah. So yeah, let us know if you have any cool tips and tricks for Seabrush as well you want us to make a video on. We take a lot of requests for this as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we hope you like this video. And make sure to leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, and also turn on notifications by hitting the little bell button so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Thanks for watching.